This is Auto House Z, and today we have a treat for you guys. What I have in front of me is the prototype Martellius high output exhaust. This is a 2.5 inch exhaust. It's 100% stainless steel and TIG welded. So this exhaust system is gonna replace the old high output. So the difference between the old and the new prototype high output, the new the catback is fully stainless steel, TIG welded, whereas the old one was a mild steel and coated. The old high output also only fit the R1 manifold, so if you go on um, this side. So the old high output catback only fit the R1 manifold, and uh, if you look at this, the old catback only had this provision for a slip fit, and you can watch our video comparing the three Martellius exhausts to see what I'm talking about. So the new high output catback will all have these flanges and Martellius told me that these will bolt up to any header and catalytic converter setup. I'd like to thank Martellius and Battle Garage for making this possible. Martellius shipped us these three components for us to product test. And if we look over here, they're trying to decide if we, they want the resonated or non-resonated pipe for the production version. So there'll be three parts to this video, an installation, a road test, and then a sound comparison for this catback on both the resonated and non-resonated pipe. And because we're in California, we're all we're gonna do this with a California legal catalytic converter. Martellius is really interested in hearing what the combination is gonna sound like with a California cat. So when choosing a cat back system, you definitely want to make sure that you don't choose one where the piping diameter is too large. But in the instance of if you have a, mo a highly modified 4A, 7A, or if you have a beam swapped Corolla, this 2.5 inch is perfect for you. So one thing I liked is this slit fit portion. So if I pick up one of these, this guy will slit fit into there. And then you'll have this exhaust clamp that'll compress onto the slit fit portion. I like this because then it gets rid of the gasket. So another part that I really liked, if you look how beefy these hangers are, like the physical girth of these hangers and then how they're welded throughout on the exhaust itself. From personal experience, one of the biggest problems I have with uh, Japanese exhaust systems is that usually the, where the hanger portion is welded is pretty thin. So what ends up happening a lot of times is that the hangers will actually rip off of the section of exhaust. And I really like how well thought out and how thoroughly welded these hangers are. So I have faith in these hangers. So the last thing I wanna go over is the hardware included. Martellius is really good about including these high quality exhaust gaskets where it's needed. Again, this band for the compression fitting. Um, you can see the hardware on this guy's really nice quality also. And then also um, the physical nut and bolt hardware 
from Martellius itself is great. Um, I've had I've um, had Martellius products on my personal car for a long time, and then track tested. None of this hardware is like rusted or seized up. All right, so we're gonna take the weights of all three components. We still don't know for the production version if we want the resonated or non-resonated pipe. But regardless, we'll take the weight of all three. Like this guy weighs 17 pounds. So it looks like this guy weighs just about 7.3 pounds. So this is hard to weigh, but so 9 pounds, 11 ounces. So you save just about 2 pounds with the resonator. 2 pounds isn't a lot, so I'm curious if the, if the resonator is going to be worth it for just the 2 pound penalty. Alright, so that's enough of me talking. Why don't we go ahead and install this exhaust? Okay, you guys saw the time lapse, um, so I'll go over the install of this thing. The camera showed 22 minutes and that was like a relaxed install, so um, yeah, not too bad. I loosened up the front of the cat. As normal with all exhaust, sometimes you have to tweak certain portions a little bit. Um, again, Martellius hardware was, was great to use. You can see the clearance is good on here. It's not hitting anything. Um, this portion, you may want to clock in a different spot, but this is coming back off of the resonated. Yeah, otherwise, everything fits up really well. There's one thing, if you listen. So I noticed that it's hitting something. The OEM exhaust hanger mount, one of the ears is actually hitting up against this guy. Which is not that big a deal. Um, it's hard to get the camera in there, but that's what the mount looks like. And it's that part that's hitting the end of the tube. So it's, so it's tough to, these guys want to keep coming apart, so it's tough to like keep these two guys together and then clamp this at the same time. So what I ended up doing was getting this block of wood and then putting it up against the top of the exhaust so I could pu push these two guys together and then clamp down at the same time. Um, you wanna make sure these two guys are all the way seated and they have a raised portion right here so that this guy will only seat a certain amount. All right, so let's hear this thing. All right, you ready? Yeah. We're gonna hear it.
All right, so, so far it sounds good. Uh, I can definitely tell it's gonna drone, but we'll, I'll hook up the GoPro to the car and then we'll go around the block and we'll actually do a road test. But yeah, so far so good. Garage Grant. Hey, what's up? This is a nice shirt. Where'd you get that? I got this from Battle Garage. So is this on the website right now? Can I buy it right now? It is. Okay. And then it's in limited quantities, right? It is. So it won't be on the store forever. No, I won't. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so hurry up and grab the shirt. Limited quantities. Why did we make this shirt? I see it says. BG, Rico style, and then we'll cut to the back. And then MFR. So why did you guys make this shirt and who's MFR? MFR is uh, Marcus Fry Racing. Uh, yeah, so one of our customers, uh, Rico, uh, you know, reached out to us a while back and said that he was gonna build a car for SEMA. And we're really excited for that. And uh, we helped him get a lot of the parts and gave him, did some consulting for him on the, you know, on the build. And, um, you know, with our parts and Marcus Fry's expertise and Rico's direction, uh, they came out with that incredible car. And um, yeah, it was just, it's, for us, it was a big deal. So we just wanted to make a shirt to kind of com commemorate that. So it's, uh, we can kind of keep those memories like alive for us, you know? Yeah. Limited shirt. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this exhaust. Well, this is my first time seeing it on the car. And I like that it's fitting well with the uh, Martellius XL prototype that you have up front. Um, and I can see you've got your cat on here, um, and yeah, it's, it's significantly larger than, than the cat. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. If we look at that. That's so I think, <clears throat> so I think what that means is to get the, the best performance. Um, you know, if you're, if you're going to be at the track only, you might, you might have a test pipe there, or you could get a, um, maybe you could get a cat and with a larger outlets to have it match up. Yeah, so a 2.5 inch high flow cat probably, if you yeah, wanted to keep right. the exhaust. For off-road use only, of course. Yeah, yeah. But if you care about the emissions, that's one thing you could do. Yeah. And um, you know, on my track car, I actually keep a cat on there because it doesn't take that much power away. And uh, I don't have to deal with like, you know, stinky fumes when I'm driving around even in the pits. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it's the environmentally responsible thing to do. So I always run a cat on my race car. And they have, they have high flow ones. They're kind of shaped like a cone. So they don't really impact the performance that much. So you know, if this if you end up having this be a track only car, it's another thing you could swap to and um, you know still have a cat, but not not decrease power you know noticeably really. Good tip. Go environment. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm seeing this for the first time, and uh, one thing I'm noticing is that there's very uh, all, on all the bends, there's not a crush there because you know a lot of times when you get an exhaust, the exhaust shop will will bend the tube to get it to fit, but then you've got an indentation which kind of restricts the flow right in those bend parts, right? So I noticed it looks, uh, it, it's, it's very minimal, very straight. I'm really liking that. Uh, the hanger lines up really well. It's like dead set, dead nuts on that. And and even back here where I think they maybe would have a problem from uh, the bends being too tight, uh, you know, rather than take a shortcut and actually, and, and have that have that crush happen there, it looks like they use like a pie cut setup, which I know this, this must take them a lot longer to produce, but um, it's probably the best way to, to be able to get a tight radius in there without affecting a uh, flow. So there's, there's a lot of attention to detail that I really like about this exhaust. And Ezekiel, you were saying that they, they told you they have these set up for low cars as well, right? Yeah, in the email their exact words was, for the lowest of cars. <laughs> if you look at the over axle portion, you can see it hugs really close to the body without you know restricting flow or actually contacting anything. So if you have a car that's really low, uh, rest assured your axle should not be hitting this guy. Yeah, and you know the other thing I like about it going over axle, as long as there's there's clearance, and and I think there will be because they they've got uh, they've got it really tied up against the chassis. Um, but the one thing I like about that is that you can run 
a longer uh, stroke suspension to get the most out of the rear of the car without it having hit the bottom of the exhaust, right? Especially, especially with all these uh, nice T3 add-ons you have here that are bringing the suspension parts closer to where the exhaust would run, right? So that's, that's a nice feature they added in there. Yeah, so that's one thing, this being my street car, I refuse to run a under axle exhaust. I think the biggest reason people run under axle is actually because of um, clearance, right? If your car's lowered. But the problem with under axle is that like when you drive on the street, it hits everything. Like if debris on the road, it, like speed bumps, um, it just becomes a nuisance. I, for myself, I have an exhaust that's, that's uh, just pieced together and a lot of those hangers don't line up the way that I would like. So I, I kind of want one of these for my own car just to bolt in and just enjoy the exhaust. All right, got the GoPro set up. We're gonna go road test for a little bit. See how it goes. One thing to note on this side, the parking brake cable um, is close to the top of this guy, so you'll need to play with this adjustment, how far in or how far out this guy goes before you actually snug this guy down. So far, I like the resonated sound a lot better. We're gonna go road test and then we'll do a flyby video. Yeah, let's do it. So I just got back from the road test after installing the resonated mid pipe. I definitely like this option a lot more. The, I feel it sounds better. It's much more subdued, but the sound is better on the resonated version. Comparing my old catback to the Martellius 2.5 inch, I see to the pants, I definitely noticed the power increase. 
I run, I'm not going to name the cat back I have, but it's essentially the most widely available largest diameter Japanese cat back you can get. So it's not supposed to be restrictive, right? It's not supposed to be restrictive, but with the Martellius units that I installed today, I definitely seat of the pants felt like I had more power, um, especially after this road test with the resonated version. Um, I feel like the idle smoother, the cabin doesn't like shake and vibrate as much. And um, yeah, we did a few a few uh, pulls onto the freeway, and uh, yeah, it definitely feels like seat of the pants. There's more power with the the Martellius catback. So how are the how are the sound levels between the two versions? You know, one with the resonator and one without. Mm. So without using a decibel meter and then just hearing inside the cabin, definitely without the resonator, the drone was really bad for me. Like. There's a certain frequency of exhaust drone that'll actually make me like nauseated. <laughs> so, so with the non-resonated pipe, two and a half thousand RPM all the way to close to four thousand, you'd get this cool bass note. But the problem is that exhaust range is also cruising at the freeway. So I was on the freeway at like three to three and a half grand. Like the cabin's like droning and. Like, I could feel like the nausea coming on, so. Do you think it'd be like too loud for like a track car? Or, you know, because sometimes you go to tracks like Laguna Seca and there's like a sound, you know, meter. Yeah. Uh, do you think that without resonator, would that cause problems at some tracks that you need to watch out? I would play it safe. I would yeah. play it safe with the resonated version. It's always hard to tell driving the car mm. in the cabin, like actually how loud the exhaust is because mm -hmm. um, you guys just saw in the flyby video that um, the, our camera guy that was outside was like wow that actually wasn't that loud but <laughs> in the in cabin it was like wow this is you know <laughs> exciting loud right um, yeah well one question I have is you know uh, based on the pipe diameters you know, I would think that the two and a half inch would be best for a car with like you know big cams. I know you do have some cams. You have some was it two seventy twos? Two sixty four. Two sixty four cams, right? Yeah. So your engine is breathing a little bit better than the stock cam, right? Um, but did you feel any like loss of power with the larger with the larger pipe diameter on the cat back? Like you know down low or yeah, I did. Okay. So like below mid range, like when you're getting the car up to speed. So on a Corolla, I'd say below mid range is like under anything under four. Oh. Um, so below mid range, I feel like I did lose some low end grind. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's so that's that's really interesting for me because um, um, you know we studied the, the exhaust theory a long time ago, and the idea was that if you have a smaller pipe, you're getting more velocity at the lower RPM to help scavenge and get more torque down low, but then it chokes up up high. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like you were, you you were able to find that trade off, right? Which I think is really interesting. Yeah. So like if you had more of a a track going car or a car that already has big cams and you you already are not getting very good velocity on the intake side then it would make sense to pair it with a larger exhaust so you can really make use of that you know coming on cam effect right yeah or or just having a larger displacement engine that's flowing more air right? yeah bingo so yeah. if you had like a beam swap yeah, yeah, yeah. um s2000 swap anything that's like higher displacement than your regular 4a the martellius 2.5 high output would be great for you right yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited, man. After seeing it on your car, uh, I definitely want to get one on my own car um, to replace uh, the stuff I have now. So, awesome. Yeah. yeah, you know, we really wanted to just say thank you to Martellius for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to, to review the exhaust. Uh, they took it upon themselves to send Ezekiel out, you know, both versions of the cat back for us to try out. And uh, I'm really happy that um, we were able to work something out with Martellius so, you know, we're able to bring your products in because they've been a huge supporter for the Corolla chassis. And I've, we've gone back and forth over the years to try to make it, you know, better and better exhaust systems for these left-hand drive cars. You know, starting all the way back in the old days, right, when, uh, you know, the, the first headers, they didn't really fit that well. And Ezekiel went through, you know, um, he, he tested quite a few and then uh, helped me give feedback back to Martellius so we can get them to, to uh, you know, better fit the cars. And, like, right now, being underneath the car again and looking at the fitment, like, everything was, like, spot on. You know, the header looked great. The cat back looked great. All the pipes looked, you know, really dialed in, and all the hangers are exactly where they're supposed to be. So, you know, I'm really, I'm really happy that they've worked with us to, to keep improving the product and not just stay static. You know, um, so yeah, coupled with, you know, this stainless steel cat back with their stainless steel header offerings now, 
uh, it's really hard to find a reason not to get a Martellius you know, exhaust system, especially if you have a left-hand drive car. One really important thing that I wanted to note was how supportive Martellius has been of not only us, but the entire Corolla community. Mm -hmm. like, like how long have I've been doing product testing for you? Several years, right? At, at least at least three yeah. years. Yeah. So I had some really harsh critiques for Martellius, <laughs> the very first header I did, and you know. Yeah. And you know, they could have taken those critiques the wrong way and decided, you know, we're not gonna work with these guys. But they did exactly the opposite. They took these critiques and improved the product. So if you so during my time if you saw the original Group A up to right now, how like um, the number one runner clears the oil filter, they got it so it um, they cleared the frame rail and the steering shaft on a left-hand drive car. Um, now the units are in stainless. They keep taking our input and in improving the product for all of us. Oh, and, and we have the O2 sensor re relocated now, so it's just it's plug and play. Yeah. Because um, uh, back in the original uh, days. Uh, they require people to to cut their O2 sensor and, ex and extend it. So uh, this all makes it a lot easier to just, you know, bolt on and go, right? Yeah, so that really impressed me about Martellius mm -hmm. is that they actually took our feedback and um, put all these um, improvements that we suggested, you know, into the final product for you guys. So yeah, it was a joy doing this product review. Um, like thank you again to Martellius. Thank you again um, to Grant, both you guys for giving me this opportunity. Battle Garage RS, and um, yeah, if you, I imagine the catback will be on the store soon. We'll see. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just also want to say you know thanks a lot to Ezekiel for keeping the uh, you know push pushing to make content uh, to help us see what these exhausts sound like, and so we can see firsthand you know and show you guys. Uh, what the product looks like on the car. So a huge thanks to Ezekiel and also for Martellius for helping to make this happen. Um, yeah, thanks again, man. Yeah, you're welcome. And then thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for viewing. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave something in the comments below. If you have any other products you'd like us to review, go shout out those companies <laughs> and say like, hey, we know a good guy to review these products for our Corolla. All right. Yeah, right. thanks again, Grant, and then thanks, thanks again, you guys. Thanks, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> good, good thing that's my own car. <laughs> no, 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 just EV for life, man. No, no, buddy, buddy, club stick five. Oh, no. Stick five. Fuck. Ah, Luna, ah! Alright, so cool, we just came back. We didn't, I did. <laughs>